You're watching the new home for live Grizzly Athletics on the Grizzly Digital Network. We would like to thank our corporate sponsors who have made today's game possible. For more information, log on to grizzlyathletics.com. Now, here's voice of the Grizzlies, Matt Mahoney. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Grizzlies Live in Nuke City. Hope everybody's doing pretty well out there. I'm Matt Mahoney, voice of the Grizzlies, and alongside head coach Steve DeCour, men's soccer team. Coach, how are we doing today? Oh, we're making it. We're making it. We are making it one step at a time here. It seems like it's been a long week for all of us here, but we go back to last Wednesday. We played a soccer game. It seems like it's been ages ago. We played Talladega. Yep. How big was that win? Down 1-0 at halftime for the Grizzlies to get two goals in the second half to uh, come up with a big win. Oh, it was it was a big win. It, it showed the resiliency of the boys. It showed uh, that when they do what they're supposed to, we're as good as anybody. Uh, but you got to give Talladega some credit because they really caused us trouble. The, the first half, um, they played uh, with a very high line, looking offside trap, which is always yeah. frustrating because everything has to be perfectly in sync. The pass, the run, all of it has to be perfectly timed. And as we saw in the first half, nine times it wasn't. So then you start to get frustrated. Then you start to, you know, press a little bit too hard. But we felt uh, we were really starting to wear them down. And especially late in the first half, we had some opportunities where we started to create chances and we knew we were going to get at them in the second. It literally took us about 60 minutes to make the adjustments. And we finally did. Let's take a look at the highlights. James Toome gets credited for the score, but what a great timing for Ibra and both the German to be on the same page. Yeah, a simple tap in for James, and James, it's his first game back, I mean, and, and his first goal, so great way to, to start your season. But if you go back further, Rude gets a ball in the left flank, and earlier in the game, we kept hitting those big diagonal yep. balls when we were off sides. What happened there, Rude then swings it to Ellis, Ellis plays into German, German with a little quarter turn releases Ibra, Ibra does all the dirty work and lays it <laughs> off for James, and James just has an easy tap in. What it showed us was that they listened, and we were more patient in our buildup, we swung the ball side to side. We played the ball on the floor. The adjustments we made at halftime, they listened and followed through, and they showed when they do that. I mean, what a great goal. Yeah. And Pierre talked about it in the post game too. He goes, it was hard for us to see all that space behind the defense and the speed that we got for those guys in the back to just ping those balls forward. Oh, yeah. And then Pierre said we had to make the adjustment at halftime, and he did. He picks up the, the game-winning goal there in the second half. Yeah, another great pass to release. Ball into Lugo. Lugo gets the, you know, gets his feet kind of tangled up a bit and lays it off to Pierre, and then Pierre hits it. And hey, when when you put a ball on frame, anything can happen. You saw it deflected off off of one of the guys at Talladega. Keeper got caught wrong, leaning the wrong way. There's nothing he could do, and, and we wind up winning two one. And, and so. a better move by Lugo there. How many times does young guys they just get that ball in the six and they just turn and bang it when they realize? Lugo goes, I got a better option by playing my teammate back. 90% of the time, yeah. you want Lugo to bang it in the <laughs> six, but you're right. He was smart enough to realize that he couldn't get the shot off. He had Pierre standing 10 yards away, let him do it. And so, great decision by Martin and a, and a good finish by Pierre. It's been a tough weekend for us all this past weekend. The, the emotional news of Saul Samuel passing. How has your team collectively as a group done in handling the news? I honestly don't know. Yeah. Um, it's been tough. Um, it's been tough for the guys on the team to just make those adjustments and, and it's hard to deal with as a grown adult but yet deal with 18 and 19 year olds and something coach uh, uh, Dr. Darren Wilson hit the nail on the head there's not anything in the coach's manual that prepares you for something like this no and they you know they've they've come together um, in times like this when it's this tight you try to be resilient and try we've got to be there for each other because that, that was one of the things that was also said was you know we've got to take care of each other we've got to look out for each other and so um, you know, yesterday traveling to Tennessee and the game getting rained out, I just hope it was cathartic in the fact that we got to get on a bus, get away, stay in a hotel, ate a great meal the night before, just were to hang out together. And so, you know, hopefully the healing process will start to begin. And the Grizzlies are starving to get out there on the field, I'm sure. The two games get uh, canceled for appropriate reasons. And now you look forward to this Saturday. It just seems like we keep looking forward to something. <laughs> and so finally Saturday, hopefully we'll get a chance to take on Tennessee Wesley. Yeah, I, we've got to play Saturday <laughs> no matter what because it's, it's what we know, it's what we love, it's what we want to do. So um, let's get out and play and let's just kind of you know, honor us all with, uh, by going out and performing and, and, and hopefully winning some games for him. 
Well, Coach, we're looking forward to Saturday and keeping up with the Grizzlies, and just uh, getting out there is going to be a win for George Gwinnett, for sure. Well, Coach, uh, thanks for stopping by. Stay strong. Thanks, I know you represent us well, yep. Coach. Thank you. We'll take a break here. We'll come back with head women's soccer coach Dominic Martelli. This is Grizzlies Live on the Grizzly Digital Network. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to Grizzlies Live at Nuke Cedar. We're joined now by head women's soccer coach, Dominic Martelli. Coach, how are we doing today? Good, Matty. Everything's great. Um, I went to work yesterday in a canoe. Um, <laughs> I was wondering how I was today, uh, today I could drive my car. It wasn't, uh, wasn't as bad. Um, I have, I, it's been a long time since it's rained that much. Yeah. That long. Yeah. Um, because it started very early in the mornings. And, um, you know, but uh, we're fortunate to have a sports grass field. Yeah, so for us, awesome. we're, we're ready to go today. Able to practice today on that sports turf field, no problems. Beautiful. Asked. Actually, it's, it's fluffed up nice from the rain. Good. We, uh, we got to use that turf field this past weekend. The Grizzlies back at home playing two games Friday and Saturday. With all the things that surrounded uh, your team and the athletic department, the bad news with Saul passing away, what did it mean for your girls to – be resilient and pick up a win and a draw. How, how did that make Coach feel? Well, I think um, everybody handled everything uh, differently. Uh, it affected everybody tremendously, no matter what. Uh, I think moving forward, when we look at the different groups that were very, very close to him, I have to say that the sophomore class yeah. on the on the women's team uh, really, really had some some really close ties with him, both on and off the field, in and out of classroom, personal, fun, social. So I think. As we move forward, those are going to be the hardest uh, affected, I think. But everybody uh, who knew him um, had, a, had a great relationship with him and uh, will, will be missed. And, and as far as the game, you know, you, you want to do a lot of things for a lot of different reasons. And, and I know we played well. Uh, the ball didn't go in that day. Um, a win would have been really, really nice benefiting. But uh, we got a result. And then the next day, it was, uh, it was an opportunity to get a couple goals in. And, and, and play a lot of players, which was good. Everybody yeah. got to play. Uh, almost everybody played in the first game, but everybody got to play in the second game. Absolutely. Let's, let's take a look at Friday's game. A 0-0 draw with point. You and I talked about it. How close we are to just getting one of these goals and a great corner kick effort here as Mary just misses. Yeah, I mean, I think our restarts were good. Uh, we even had a couple other chances. We didn't capitalize off some restarts. Uh, balls bouncing around in the box. Uh, but I think the two or three chances were you know, open goal and one-on-one, -on -one, uh, we had to finish those. And, and We get a and black clip of, of probably our best chance with Nikki there right yeah, at the end of regulation. Right that, would have, that would have been huge. That would have been just for the whole event yeah. uh, of what was happening that weekend. I think that would have really made everybody feel, feel real good. But it's okay. I mean, uh, we move forward and, you know, ultimately every game we get better. Every game uh, we'll, we'll play for something. We'll improve. Um, our, our goal in, is to get to Iowa and, and give ourselves the best chance to win. Big step in the right direction on Saturday. I thought the Grizzlies played just as well as they did on Friday, but a big result. 7-0 win for them. As we take a look at some of the highlights, Mary Vernetti gets things going first for the Grizzlies. Yeah, I think our shots were better. Our finishing was better. And I think that's what created the goals, our final pass. Um, we had a great, a great video session yesterday. 
Um, my volunteer coach Colin was able to put a bunch of clips together, and he he kind of showed you know some good and bad and and what we know we can actually fine tune uh, moving forward. And and again, even if you get two chances, they have to be better in a game. We happen to have 20 chances <laughs> in both games. One game we scored zero. One game we scored seven. Um, that's that's what we want to be able to be able to work on and, and do as good as we can. Uh, Mackenzie Bailey picks up uh, two goals to her name. One just a rip from about 25 yards out, and she gets a second one later on in the half that uh, made her the grizzly of the game uh, with a nice little move on a pullback and just a great finish for her. That's her strength. And again, I mean, the, the second one there was a, was a great shot and, and two very similar finishes. Uh, you know, Mackenzie, we, we work on getting forward. We work on, on going forward when she receives the ball. If we can get the ball around the 18 with her, whether she makes the pass or takes the shot, uh, we know she has a lot of the good things that go along with finishing in her repertoire. Uh, everybody else has to fine tune it and, and be consistent. And we, it's amazing when you look at us playing really well, yeah. when you look at in, each individual playing really well, and then to see them not do some of the things they do well. I, I, I think maybe, I don't think it's a confidence thing, I think it's just a focus thing. Hey, this is what I do, you know what I mean? You know, yeah. Maddie, if I told you all the great things that, that I do, we wouldn't we wouldn't have enough time on the show. Well, we would fulfill those strengths. Right, but I make sure whatever we're doing well, we continue. Yeah. And I think that's what they have to do, the players. And what's great, uh, you said all 25 players stepped on the field on Saturday and a couple of reserves got some goals. Sarah Murphy got on the act as well. This was a great time. goal. It was a great serve. What a touch. I mean, to, to beat the keeper and also keep it on frame. And that would have been nice on Friday yeah. uh, from someone. But I think, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're close. We're yeah. close. We're, we're doing really well. And, um, you know, I want I want the girls to know that they're they're going to get a lot of wins moving forward. And uh, moving forward here on to Saturday, we're going to take on Tennessee Wesleyan doubleheader up there. Guys going to play first at one. You guys will follow up at three o'clock. What are you looking forward to in that matchup? Well, I think to me that's that's great to have a doubleheader, not yeah. only at home but to play on the road in a doubleheader. So we yeah. know the whole time as we're driving, we're going to get there and be able to watch our men win. And then hopefully they can stay a little bit, let us get a couple goals, and then, and then we, get, we get some wins and, and move forward. I mean, Tennessee Wesleyan is traditionally one of the better teams in the, in the Appalachian Conference, and um, we need to beat those teams to continue to get votes. Uh, again, we're receiving votes yep. in the top 25, uh, which is a great thing because, you know, we, we had a tie and a win. Uh, two wins would have maybe got us a few more votes, but again, yep. that's not why we play. Uh, but that, again, is the respect, being 6-5-1, and one, and still, still getting votes in the top 25. Does it help this stretch run through October to lead to the conference tournament that you're getting some more practice days in between these games to break down the film and work on specific areas of the game? Right, like the rain yesterday was was something that was good. You know, you don't want to miss a good fitness day on Tuesday, which is traditionally what we do. Uh, but I think, you know, we're not out of shape as a team, um, and we have plenty of time. We have a full month. Maddie, we have a month. Yeah. You know, November 14th and 15th is the conference tournament. We have, you know, only five games in that month. So we have a lot more to do uh, away from games, but also a lot more to do in the games. Yeah. We can see that we can practice all we want against each other, look great against each other. <laughs> and that's what sometimes you shake your head go, you know, we're not that way in, in a game, you know, when we play so well in practice. Right. So. Well, Coach, uh, looking forward to, to catching up with that doubleheader. Be safe on the road, and uh, good luck hey, this Saturday. Did, did, did I tell you, What's one it? of my jobs at, o at Ohio State was to watch, make sure the astroturf, you know, had to let people know when it needed to be cut. So I didn't get a chance to tell you that, uh, you know, when, when we had the rain and we're, we're excited to play on sports. I think sports. Doug's here. Doug's yeah, on the yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let him know that yeah, yeah. we need to cut that the was, turf. That was a, my, my, uh, one of my jobs to, to maintain Ohio Stadium. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll come back with head baseball coach Brad Strondel. This is the Grizzly Digital Network. Go Grizzly. There it is.
As a member of the NAIA, Georgia Gwinnett College is responsible for the actions of its coaches, student athletes, faculty and staff, fans, boosters, and alumni. We are committed to the principle of institutional control and operate in our athletics program in a manner consistent with the letter and spirit of the NAIA and Georgia Gwinnett College. We expect our student athletes to be model students in the classroom by offering academic support services in a variety of ways throughout their collegiate career. From study halls and tutoring to mentoring and personal growth and development training, GGC puts academic success at the forefront of our mission. Go Grizzlies! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Grizzlies Live at Nuke Cedary. We are joined by Brad, and I, the, Brad Strombo is underneath this beard somewhere. Coach, how are you doing? Good. How are you today? I'm doing well. Doing well. Um, looking forward to in this this baseball season. It's been a while since we've had you on the show. How, how was your summer? How did things go? Summer was good. Summer was busy, uh, obviously, and it was you know we had a nice recruiting class. We had a nice time out there in the fun in the sun and uh, you know just talking about what we did and uh, looking forward to you know upcoming years and especially this year. We'll talk about the recruiting class in a minute but I have, I have a present for you okay. We do. We, we've got a clip for you here and I want you to walk me through it. What were you thinking during the, the last out here in the Lawrenceville bracket and, and the dog yeah. pile? How much fun is that? Look it's at how much fun those guys are having right there. Where, where are you at? I mean, because coaches, yeah, because coaches aren't allowed in the dugout. Well, yeah, pilot. but look at Coach Les. He's in the <laughs> middle of it. They come flying in he's here in, too. They all just keep going. Face comes there, over the there top. There we are, right there. The huddle in the yep. back there. We're all just, you know, hanging out, and um, you know, right when that's done, you go shake their hands, yeah. and it's just a, it's a wonderful experience. That you, it's just you never know if that's ever going to come again, and we, we just you just enjoy the moment. So. What do you remember? Because it was a long game that stretched get two games that stretched that over about two and a half days what, what do you remember about maybe that last game I that last what do you always how remember? long the last two outs took yeah the, or the last out really yeah. because we had to make a mound visit and then we had a walk and then we had a base hit and then we had a high chopper and then it started to get stressful because of the guy that was at the plate hit the, the walk it, it was a go-ahead run but he also hit the tank the in the first inning or it might have been the game before but yeah. Yeah, I remember how long that took to get that out. I'll give you some insight. As a broadcaster, you always want to set up that moment. And so I set that moment up when there was nobody on. When the bases were loaded, there's two us. I ran out of things to set up. I'm telling and you. And so all there was was the pure emotion <laughs> of, the, of, of the result. But it was fun. I mean, you know, it's you wouldn't awesome. have it any other way. And for our first World Series experience and, and uh, appearance, you, you, that's how you want to go. That's awesome. how you want to go. You want it to be perfect in every way. And, you know, the emotion that just showed on there just was pure and unadulterated, just pure yeah. joy and relief. And it's, yeah, that's true. A little bit of stress, relief. too. A little relief. bit of deep breath. Um, one thing you're not going to see this year that we saw in that clip is a lot of those guys. Yeah. Huge roster yeah. turnover. How has recruiting gone this offseason? That's great. I mean, you know, we it ebbs and flows for sure. We had uh, a couple kids that got Division One eligible right at the end of the summer um, that weren't able to come in, but that's okay. And we expect that, and that's why we recruit them. Uh, recruit a kid all the way through, so if they become Division One eligible, they go Division One. Um, if they don't, they come here. Or you know, we had a couple of guys actually choose to come to us rather than go to a different school at the end of the summer after summer school. So um, it was great, and, and really what we have to do is we have to continue to build upon the foundation that uh, has been laid the last two and a half years. Yeah. What's, uh, what's great is that this time of the year, fall camp, fall season, fall practice, this is where a lot of the work gets done. You make adjustments throughout the season, yeah. but you really can make strides in improving getting your team better. What gets done in the fall in coaches' eyes? What gets done, we started at zero again uh, <laughs> about three or four months or three or four weeks ago. Just really going over the basics, what we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish, kind of the big umbrella paintbrush statements. Um, and really, to actually today um, is the first day that we're really breaking down the, into the small nuances of what we're trying to do um, in terms of some signs, some, you know, some, some more advanced um, defensive plays, what we're trying to do, yep. some more advanced offensive, some more stuff that doesn't happen every day in every single game, but happens once every, <laughs> once, once, maybe even once a season. Right. Um, so, but it's great. It's a great time of the year. One of the things that's going to change in the grand scheme of things with college baseball are the new balls. You know, yeah. they, they got the minor league baseball is going to be introduced to college baseball. Even at our level, what do you know about the new baseball and how is it going to change the game? It's supposed to go 10 to 14 feet further. It's supposed to travel further because there's less uh, airflow restriction. There it is right there. Ball on the um, left is see. the one from last year and the ball on the right is the one we're going to use from this Correct. year. Correct, and it's got a, uh, a little bit of a different core in it. Um, and so really what I think is going to happen is I think that the 
guys that can throw a really good slider are going to benefit from this, but guys that throw a curveball aren't going to be, it's not going to be good for them. This is going to be a storyline I'm going to take yeah. throughout the whole year. The seams are a little different. They're not as raised. So right. the one on the right, there's not going to be as much torque Correct. from those slow slider so, guys. It's going to be tough on right. him. It's not going to break as much. So guys with really good hand speed at the end are going to be able to be able to spin it a lot better. Um, so really what it's going to incorporate is a guy that doesn't have the velocity or the arm strength is right. going to have to come up and really develop either a splitty or make their change up a lot better. Yep. Um, and so plus with the going further, <laughs> you know, I think it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be good for the game. You know, they took the bats away about five or six years ago yep. for the minus five to the minus three ounce bats, yep. um, and so bringing back some offense, I think, is what they're trying to incorporate. And so a guy that can't spin it, it's gonna be more straight balls to be able to hit. And besides raising the mound up, um, <laughs> it's really all you can do. Have your pitchers adjusted? Have you, have you gave them the new ball? And is there any guy where you're like, listen, we've got to change your complete repertoire? No, I mean, That's really, there, there hasn't been much much change. I think the reality of the change is going to have to come when we're actually facing competition. And if we get a guy that just really can't get it done because it's just not working, um, you know, we'll make those adjustments at the time. But, I mean, at this point in time, it's there's – I, no think, I think all speed pitches, whether it be slider, curveball, change up for a strike, is going to be sure. huge early in the season. That's so. what it is. It's going to take the breaking ball out of it. But, you know, the thing that you can get better with this is you can get a better two-seam run. Yep. So you get a better two-seam run with your fastball. You teach everybody a two-seam fastball grip. You know, there's equalizers if you go right. one way or the other. I, I think people realize we could talk about this the rest of the day. We could. We could. <laughs> but, uh, Coach, what are, you, what are you looking forward to with this team? Is it is it something that hasn't come to the surface yet that you know is that deep You know, it's side? a totally different team than last year. Totally, completely different. And it's, it's different personalities. It's different ways of going about things. It's different. It's literally different in almost every aspect. Because the yep. kids that were with us last year were with us two and three years. And so we had a really good relationship. They knew what was expected. Yep. They knew how to play the game the right way. And these guys were coming in. You know, I think we have about 14 or 15 new guys. Um, you know, and bringing that with guys that already know the expectation to do it. It's, it's, we just have to mesh them together, meld them together, and have them play as a team. The reason why we won last year is because they played with heart at the end. Yep. And they played with heart the whole year. But at the end, they wanted it more than anybody else. And so how do you get that out of a team? It kind of just it, it, it exists right. throughout the course of the year, and so what we got to do is we have to do our our steps and just make sure that they're doing everything that they're supposed to do to be able to play the game the right way. Yep. Um, put the ball in play, put the ball in the strike zone, teach those things, and then over the course of time, <clears throat> the season, we become a team, and then we'll see where we're at at the end. This may give people some insight to where Coach is at in the process. First game of the year, do you know the date who we're playing? Uh, it's like January. Yeah, exactly. We don't care if we're playing yet because we've got so much college. to. Yeah, 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 exactly. Blue Mountain. But it's so much we got to do between yeah. now and then. It's not even on the radar. Yep. No, and it's not, and it doesn't need to be until the end of January. Yeah, so. absolutely. Well, Coach, thanks for your time. Thanks Thank for stopping you. by. We look forward to having you more on in the spring. How it's about great. that? Do I anything in my beard? I like it. Yeah. Somebody else does it, but I like it. That's him right there? Yeah, that's him right there. That's okay. That's all We're right. going to try to get him to grow a beard. Yeah, no right. shave November. No chance. No chance. Talk about Dr. Darren Wilson. Right? Yeah. Dude, he hates it. It's all right. We like him, though, right here on Grizzlies Live at Nuke City Race, our head baseball coach, Brad Strom. But we'll come back and put a nice little bow on this show. You're watching the Grizzly Digital Network. medical director of our sports medicine program at Gwinnett Medical Center. So it's just a, a great relationship. Here we have three athletic trainers. We have James, we have Andy and Shira, and they cover all the sports out here. So if any of the athletes out here get injured, uh, you know, they're able to get them in uh, to care faster. Um, they can get them into Dr. Lemongood or with the hospital right around the corner. If there's an emergency, they can get them over there. We're very happy, uh, very happy. We look forward to more sports uh, out here at Georgia Gwinnett College so we can add more athletic trainers. I have 70 on staff right now uh, throughout the different high schools and the professional teams and the recreational teams in the area. And uh, to be able to add more staff out here to help you know, the three athletic trainers out here that you have, that would be wonderful. Are you tracking the very latest with Grizzly Athletics? Stay up to date by following Grizzly Athletics on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can join the conversation by using the hashtag GrizzlyAthletics all season long. And as always, 
catch all the recaps, stats, and news on grizzlyathletics.com. Don't be left out. Follow all the latest with Grizzly Athletics online. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to uh, Grizzlies Live at Nukes Eatery. Uh, appreciate uh, all of our coaches coming by, our staff as well, providing some support. Um, quick plugs real quick here. Grizzly, uh, Grizzlies, anytime you have a claw card, come on over to Nukes, get a discount, and anytime for our fans to come to Nukes in the month of October, you can round your bill up to the nearest whole dollar, and that change will be donated to the GMC Cancer Foundation, where Nukes and GMC has teamed up for a great partnership this month. Nukes is going to match a, par a portion of the proceeds to that Cancer Foundation, and that uh, actually directly benefits the cancer patients and raising awareness here in Gwinnett County. Phenomenal thing going on here at Nukes. Get on board. Uh, something else you can get on board with, the Grizzly Game Bites newsletter, 100% free, as well as the Grizzly Club going on right now. Get on our website, grizzlyathletics.com. Men's soccer is going to head to Athens, Tennessee at 1 o'clock to take on Tennessee Wesleyan. They'll take the new number 12 ranking with them as well. The women will follow suit at 3 o'clock, same location there in Athens, Tennessee. That kickoff is scheduled for 3 between Georgia Gwinnett and Tennessee Wesleyan. Men's women's tennis programs will host the Grizzly Open down at the GGC Tennis Facility this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Our main man, Clay Tranum, will be posted up all weekend long, which means for you, the fans, stay locked to grizzlyathletics.com all weekend long for the latest information. Our tweet of the week comes to you from uh, our good friend, Myron Cantrell, who uh, tweeted to uh, Coach Deku in GGC Men's Soccer, gave him a shout out for their big win against Talladega last Wednesday. Myron used the hashtag Grizzly Athletics, and uh, folks, all of our fans, you can be our Tweet of the Week by using any of the hashtags you see on our screen there. We'll be back for Grizzlies Live next Wednesday right here at New Cedary. You can watch online at 12 noon, grizzlyathletics.com, or you can come on over and check us out. And finally, we um, are deeply saddened by the news of the passing of one of our very own student athletes, Saul Samuels. From all of us here at Grizzly Athletics, we send our deepest thoughts and prayers to not only Saul's family, the GGC community, but Grizzlies everywhere. Rest in peace, Saul.